Hello everyone, Elitist Datto here, back again to tell you why you're bad at video games and I'm not. I wasn't planning on making a video about the article that Bungie dropped, one of the final ones before Lightfall, about bringing back difficulty to Destiny, as I didn't think a lot of the things in it were that big of a deal. But after seeing some of the outrage, I wanted in on those sweet, sweet rage views. So let's talk about what happened. Essentially, Bungie says that the difficulty of the game is, generally speaking, too low in most day-to-day -day activities. They are going to be revamping a lot of content in the game, and here's how. First up, Adept Difficulty, that's gone. No more Adept Mode. Hero Difficulty is going to become available at 1750, which will be the new soft cap for Lightfall. Legend and Master both unlock at 1800, which is the new power cap. I'm assuming 1810 is the new pinnacle cap. The levels for these activities are as follows. Hero is 1770, Legend is 1830, and Master is 1840. Bungie wants to make Legend content in the game in general closer in difficulty to the Legend difficulty of the campaign. Not only that, but Bungie is implementing power level disadvantages in these activities on a permanent basis. Hero is minus 5, Legend is minus 15, which is exactly like the Legend campaign, Master is minus 20, which is exactly like contest mode, and GMs will remain at minus 25. So no matter what your level is, for example, if you enter a Master activity, your level will be 20 levels under the enemies, just like GMs are minus 25, it's the exact same concept. Match game is gone, we covered this already. Mismatched shields will now take 50% less damage from non-matching damage sources across the entire game. Burns in high level content will be split into surges and threats. Surges are basically a burn, 25% increased elemental damage, with surges for high difficulty content changing seasonally and weekly. The featured seasonal surge will be strand, the weekly rotating ones for Season 20 will be Solar and Void. Threats increase incoming elemental damage by the same amount, 25%. High-level activities have overcharged weapons, where you can basically think of it as a burn modifier, but it's on your gun. 25% bonus damage for that weapon type. Kinetic damage is also increased by 25% if you're using a Surging subclass. Overcharge does not stack with Surge, so if the weapon of the day is SMG and the element is Void, don't bother trying to do a Void SMG. You're not going to get super stacked bonus damage. Overcharged weapons currently are weapons set per activity, and then weapons featured as champion counters on the seasonal artifact. That's what they're going to be for the season. Combatants will be harder to stagger and will get increased health across the board as a means to compensate for these modifiers in high-level activities specifically, or activities with these modifiers. Stuff that is not changing. Equipment lock on certain activities. Matchmaking is still hero only. Mods that affect enemy types or fire team coordination, that's not changing. Champion availability and GM rule sets like limited revives, wipe conditions, and the schedule. We already talked about how Bungie is updating Lake of Shadows and Arms Dealer with new enemies, encounters, and mechanics, along with how Exodus, Crash, and Inverted Spire aren't going to be showing up as often until they get revamps of their own. We also talked about how Season 16 and 19 Battlegrounds are entering the Vanguard Ops playlist. Scoring is also coming to the Vanguard Ops playlist. They gave Nightfall as an example of how the scoring is going to work, so that reason alone is why I don't believe the strike scoring that I've been hoping for, with like the medals and everything, is coming to Vanguard Ops. I would love to be wrong there. And to incentivize people from not just sparrowing through strikes, on top of it being harder with a difficulty increase, score now determines some amount of your reward. The higher your score, the bigger the Vanguard rank multiplier is going to be. You get 1x multiplier for 30,000 points. The multiplier goes up every 5,000 after the first 30k, and it caps out at 250,000 points for a 7x multiplier. And this applies to all Vanguard modes, including Nightfall. Speaking of Nightfall, it is also getting these level adjustments. Minus 5 Hero, minus 15 Legend, minus 20 Master, minus 25 GM. So next season, GMs are going to be 1840. The enemy levels in GMs will be 1840. The highest effective level you can be is 1815. Master is also going to be 1840, but it's only minus 20. So 1820 
is the highest effective level for master. Highest effective level means that anything above those levels will not increase your power. So if you're going into a GM and you're 1826, that doesn't matter. It's, the game's going to drop you down to 1815. The Nightfall Weekly Challenge will now require you to get 200,000 points across multiple runs versus trying to cram in 100,000 points in a single run. I'm not sure if this means you need 200,000 total points because that seems doable in like certain GMs or even Masters, or if you need multiple 200,000 point runs, which seems very unlikely, but I'm not 100% sure. Nightfalls will have two surges, an overcharged weapon, and will have harder combatants. Master Raids. You get one overcharged weapon, two surges, no threats, and combatants don't have increased health or stagger resistance. Bungie wants to bring Master Raids in line with other Master content without the need to build craft towards surges or overcharges, even though I think people are still going to do that anyway. Lost Sectors, Nightmare and Empire Hunts, Weekly Campaign Missions, Dares of Eternity, Wellspring, and Seasonal Battlegrounds are all getting tuned with these revised difficulty options. Bungie will monitor Lost Sectors to see if their loot needs to be adjusted over the course of Season 20. Nightmare Hunts, Empire Hunts, and Weekly Missions are getting these Hero, Legend, and Master settings tweaked like everything else is. Dares Legend is getting tweaked. Wellspring Master is getting tweaked. Seasonal Battlegrounds, we know, is already acting like Hero difficulty, aka minus 5, aka how Season 19 is right now. I have a lot to say. Elitist Datto's here. I hear it all the time. Where's Elitist Datto? We want more Elitist Datto. I'm here. I'm here for a video. Let's talk. You brought this on yourselves. Here we go. First, I want to acknowledge something that I think most people will agree with me on, so that way I get to build some goodwill for later in the video. The Surge and Overcharge system. First off, not really that complex to understand. One subclass element will surge for the entire season. That's Strand for season 20. And then two of them are going to rotate weekly. That's Solar and Void. Overcharge weapon means X weapon is better for the day. It's better for the week. It's better for the strike. Whatever. It's kind of similar to what we have now. There's a new name, obviously, but it's sort of similar. I respect that Bungie is doing what they can to keep the game feeling fresh. Seasonal artifact mods, surges, overcharge. They're trying to make people change things up week over week, month over month, season over season. It's commendable. It's a way to shake up gameplay without just willingly messing up the standbox with balance changes for the hell of it. And in theory, it's a good idea. When subclasses were still in 2.0 world, when we weren't as strong as we are now, when it was a new idea, it was neat. <sighs> people are just over it, man. Something can be a neat idea, but also not be wanted or even needed. People don't hear Bungie say, hey, try out some new stuff this week. We'll give you a bonus. They hear, use this or you will not be optimal this week. They feel forced into a thing rather than being persuaded into it. Now that every subclass can wild out with some crazy builds, people just want to do their own thing and I get it. They want to use the crazy build they came up with and just go nuts. Don't tell me what guns to use. Don't tell me what subclass to use because that will literally break my build. You're forcing us so specifically into builds and now you're telling me which guns and which subclass I got to use. The push to use a certain subclass isn't really needed anymore. A couple of years ago in 2.0 subclass world, 25% more solar damage was a little bit of a bigger deal. Builds didn't really exist back then beyond just picking an exotic and a subclass tree that meshed together, so it was okay. Today, we have way more tools and being pushed into something specific isn't as needed. I've been there. There have been times where I just want to go Gremlin, Solar Bonk, Titan mode, but I can't because it's Arc Week. I mean, the secret, I'm gonna let you guys in on the secret. The secret is that you don't actually need to follow along unless, you know, maybe it's specifically for a reward at the end. You can do GM Nightfalls without using a gun that is the same element as the burn. Yeah, the cops can't even stop you. But at the same time, why not? Why not make it easier on yourself? It's free damage. Why not take it? People are just over the idea, and I think Bungie can probably throw in the towel on this concept. But... If Bungie does, and then there's a community uproar about how things don't really feel fresh in the game anymore because there's no incentive 
to use different stuff, I am going to karate chop some heads off of some bodies. Let's move to difficulty, and this is where all that goodwill I literally just built is going to die. The theatrics and the drama that I have seen about some of these changes is insane, which actually makes things pretty par for the course. Spoilers, you're going to be fine. Bungie just actually wants you to engage with the stuff that they've made, you know, like build crafting and mods. We're getting so many tools this year to make builds way easier and way more worth it, and we're also getting a new subclass. Unless you are literally brand new to the game and don't know any better, this should all be sounding very cool. The following sentences can be true at the same time. The game is too easy overall. Some activities need better loot. And just because an activity is being made harder does not mean it needs more loot. I had an analogy brought to me while streaming when discussing this article. The person said, how would you feel if you had to do 20% more work at your job with no pay increase? And I said, this isn't a job, it's a video game, you nut. Well, okay, for me, it's a job. For everybody else, it's not a job. You get it. But later that night, I came up with a better response. The analogy could work, but I would reframe it this way. Your job has increased your pay over the last two years by 300% with no additional work required. It's basically automated, easy. Now they ask you to fill out a few extra forms day to day. We've gotten paid quite a lot this past year. Way more than this small amount of additional work would pay. The overreaction to Bungie making anything remotely more difficult should get some of you nominated for Oscars. It's wild. At the same time, Bungie kept the game so easy for so long. It's not just this past year that things have been easy. So the concept of being nervous about a difficulty increase, I can understand. People have had it good and easy for so long that it's become the norm, and Bungie has set bad expectations. You don't need to get better at the game because you never had to get better at the game. Bungie brought down all the top tier rewards from GMs and raids and blah, 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 down to seasonal content. When you can do seasonal content, wearing a bunch of trash bags as armor, a blindfold as a helmet, and get top tier stuff, why bother learning anything at all? But some of you are taking this way too far. If you're a veteran player of the game, you have nothing to worry about. Basically nothing to worry about. The base difficulty of the game was far too low. We power crept past a lot of content. Bungie is now bringing those bits of content more in line with our current power. And people expect rewards to be adjusted as well, just because things are getting a little bit harder. Master raiding? Yeah, I'll give you that one. But master raid loot was a problem well before this situation, and thus I don't think should really be linked together with the difficulty changes that much. The thing that really tickled me was the demand for dramatically increased loot from the Vanguard Ops playlist. Y'all, it's the Vanguard Ops playlist. It's for beginners. It's for getting a pinnacle reward and then bailing. It is not meant to be a source of infinite high tier rewards. The beginner level content is not going to be infinitely grindable and replayable. It never is in any game. They are trying to make it more entertaining and more engaging by adjusting the difficulty and changing it to encourage killing stuff instead of skipping everything on your sparrow. And combined with the Vanguard weapon focusing next season, I want to see how things play out before I get a little too judgy judgy on it. But difficulty talk? You're worried about the difficulty spike in the Vanguard Ops playlist? Get real. It is easier than Heist Battlegrounds. Vanguard Ops is not turning into Grandmaster Ops. If anything, Bungie is bringing this in line with the rewards it currently gives. I would be shocked if there was a large difference in the amount of time it took to complete strikes in this playlist compared to now when actually going through and killing everything. There is no reason to increase the amount of loot from the Vanguard Ops playlist based on these changes alone. Yeah, of course you're not going to get the super high score 7x multiplier in the strike playlist. It's beginner level. If you do the easy thing, it's not going to give you as much loot as the hard thing. 
If you're expecting the strike playlist to become a loot pinata, I don't know what to tell you. Nine years of this, I'm still explaining the same things over and over. I'm so tired of the theatrics. Spare me with the skeleton key talk to. Actually, no, don't. I'm going to talk about that right now. Skeleton, D1 skeleton keys. Here we go. You want some hot takes? Here we go. D1 skeleton keys worked in D1 because of what D1 was. D2 is a very different experience from D1 in almost every single way. In D1, we didn't have all the stuff we have now. We didn't have seasonal vendors rotating in with guns, with crafted guns on a three month basis. We didn't have all this loot pouring in all the time, holiday events, seasonal events. Skeleton keys were all we had. We had the Crucible robot selling randomly rolled palindromes, Dead Orbit maybe selling a hung jury scout, an FWC rocket with cluster bombs, some raid guns, and skeleton keys. It worked back then because it's all we had. It's all we had to go do. It will not work in the same way in D2 because things are different now. Grandmaster Nightfall weapons, which are sort of a spin-off of strike-specific loot in general, on average, are considered mid-tier at best. There is raid loot that is considered worse than stuff that you can buy off of a vendor. D1 had this too, let's be real. I acknowledge that a lot of raid weapons in D1 were terrible. But I do think people romanticize skeleton keys much too fondly, and their application in D2 would not even be remotely close to their application in D1. It would be equal to that of a Band-Aid being applied to a dead person, trying to bring them back to life. Something that Bungie should maybe bring back, and I've seen an uptake in this feedback recently, is the Five of Swords, aka the Nightfall card, that allowed you to customize your difficulty exactly how you wanted it, with loot that would hopefully match. Some people saying they're annoyed with these difficulty changes because they don't want to sweat in PvE. They don't want to throw on builds. First off, I have to say, if you had a build, number one, you wouldn't be sweating. And number two, you'd enjoy the game a lot more. Turns out you might be making the game harder for yourself when you throw on junk or things that have no synergy. Now, can I understand that some people still are maybe not the most in tune with some of the game's systems. Yes, Bungie is not exactly the master of tutorials. It feels like they're building the game for people who already know the game. But I do also think that if people spent a little bit of their playtime to instead read or maybe watch a couple of guides to make the effort to try to understand what's happening, you'd be a lot better off. Bungie not making in-game tutorials on how to build craft is not the 100% lockdown excuse you might think it is. Although I'll give you a chunk of it. It takes a couple minutes to look up a guide. There's so many build guides out there. There are destiny item manager links that literally make the build for you automatically. You press one button and all of the gear is equipped. Make the slightest effort to understand the game on a level higher than shoot gun at enemy and you might have a better time. Bungie is not literally going to hold your hand and say what fragments to equip that have the best synergy with this exotic. Do you know what they do to new players? Shaw Han babysits them for two hours, and then they throw them in the middle of Dark Souls with level one gear. They're not going to hold your hand that hard, and regardless of what you think of that statement, it doesn't change the situation we're in right now. But, on the opposite side, maybe Bungie should have taught people that you need to continuously shoot an overload champion with an overload gun to keep it from fully regenerating its health. I don't know. Obviously, there's an equilibrium that we can hit there. Opposite side of the spectrum. Seen a lot of talk about Master Raid loot. I've seen the comments. Master Raid loot was bad before these changes. I want Master Raid loot to change too. But people who wanted VOG Master Mode to become Contest Mode? You got your wish, in a way. The shoe's on the other foot now when it comes to Master Raids. Back in the VOG days, I advocated for the fact that Master Raids were actually better than making them into Contest Mode because you could eventually gain some levels on Master Raid since it didn't power cap you in any way. You could eventually make things easier for yourself if you got enough levels. You could out-level it. But people took issue with that because people hate leveling and wanted access without having to level. 
Now, Bungie has flipped it. You're power capped, minus 20 on master content forever. You'll need to be pinnacle cap and plus 10 on the artifact to get into master, which I think is mostly reasonable. Anyone actively playing master content will be able to get those levels pretty easily. But now I'm seeing some complaints that the master raid's gonna be harder because we can't gain any power against it like we can right now. Just found that funny. Obviously, master raid is going to be run even less without better loot incentives. Nothing has changed there. Why would I run Master Raids for loot when I just got to free farm Master Duality, giving the best armor the game has to offer for much less effort? I asked some of my hardcore friends, what would it take to want to actually run Master Raids besides getting the title and then just leaving forever? And they said, 65 plus stat roll armor at a minimum, multiple adept drops per challenge, and additional cosmetics in the form of ornaments, ships, etc. They wanted Nano Phoenix, which hardcores I think would like, but casuals would absolutely despise. Nano Phoenix was a ship with what felt like a 1% drop rate at the end of a raid, for those who don't know. Master loot needs to be ballin' out of control. I'm getting 65 plus gear from the season pass. Why am I running master raids for some 62s? But Master Difficulty also has some questions that need to be answered, like boss health, scaling changes, how similar to other Master content is it going to be? Overall, I do anticipate Master content to be a bit harder because it's literally contest mode, and contest mode is kind of hard. Although it's not harder than GMs, as GMs are minus 25, and contest mode is minus 20. If you're steamrolling stuff like GMs right now, not much is really going to change there. Bungie is working on incentives in the form of enhanced adept weapons, but I still think that they can go further. I should not be getting 60 or fewer stat armor rolls from Master Raid content. Master extends to dungeons too, and this is going to make something like Master Dungeon Farming potentially a lot more difficult. Need to see how it plays, but you aren't able to outlevel it anymore or get close to its level. Again, it's almost the equivalent of GMs. I've again seen people advocating more to make legend difficulty have matchmaking, my opinion on high level matchmaking remains the same. The higher the difficulty, the more qualifications a player should have before being able to enter that level of matchmaking. You should need to have multiple clears. You should already need to have proven yourself in legend content before being allowed to matchmake. This will reduce the amount of people unqualified for such high level content and would make the matchmaking experience a lot better. If you make it a complete free for all, I don't think it would turn out well. If Bungie wanted to experiment with legend matchmaking, I would absolutely love to see the data. Hopefully when LFG features launch late this year, they will alleviate some of these problems. One thing that did leave me confused was this paragraph in the article. Quote, We are aware that Lost Sectors and weekly campaign missions are not as rewarding as the community would like. We actually agree. Same thing with Dares of Eternity and The Wellspring. The passion around them is appreciated and your feedback is always clear. They should be a bit more challenging. Here are our plans to improve not only them, but other activities too." End quote. So, I agree that they could probably be made a little more challenging, but then Bungie says they aren't as rewarding as the community would like. They agree, but then they say nothing about what they're doing about the rewards, like not even a tease. Did they just forget to talk about the rewards? Are they going to talk about them later? Do they possibly mean that they're not as rewarding in terms of the difficulty and that's why they're making them harder? You know, if one or two, kind of a bonehead move, I guess, to not really discuss rewards or mention when you're going to talk about them. If three, what the hell kind of phrasing is this? Not ideal phrasing. Some of these activities do need a loot sweep. I realize that Lost Sector Farming is very simple for what amounts to getting some of the best armor in the game. It's a very clear path to exotics, but we have so many exotics now and so many bad ones that trying to get the thing you want to drop in the first place combined with getting a decent roll, it's getting a little bit difficult and some revisions there would be nice. I used to sing a different tune to this situation, but now that we have way more exotics, and now that it's been so long, it's kind of another we're over it moment. Also, to all the people mad about no Gambit notes, number one, it literally says in the post that the post is focused on the Vanguard Ops playlist. Number two, you expecting Grandmaster Gambit or something? Bungie did a full revamp of Gambit last year. People still ain't touching it. And if Bungie does not end up touching Gambit at all, I would understand. They tried. They tried to make it work. 
they made changes that they thought would be for the best. And whether or not you agree with those changes, there is no denying that time was spent trying to revise it and making changes. And it's quite possible that Bungie was just tired of devoting resources to Gambit only for people to continue to not play it. Sure, they can keep trying to iterate, make tweaks and all that, but eventually you reach a point where your time is better invested elsewhere. In concludiosity, you're gonna be fine. Vanguard Ops playlist, you're gonna be fine. It's okay. The difficulty increase is barely gonna be felt at the bottom end of the content spectrum. Use this time to get inspired. Use this time to get motivated about learning new things. Because if you had time to watch this video, I know you got some time to go look up some guides. If you've never made a build, if you've never done anything more than slap on a gun, put on some random fragments that you have no idea what they do and just call it a day, introduce yourself to a brand new world. You will enjoy the game so much more. And I will try to make some content that explains things in a more beginner-friendly way, even if I've tried that in the past and people didn't watch nearly as much as me laughing about Divinity. You're going to be fine. We power crept too hard for too long, and Bungie is not even trying to level the playing field. Just bring it close. Stop overreacting to things that are not live in the game yet. And start educating yourself on some of the wonderful systems this game has. Because if you do, not only are you going to have a better time playing, you are going to crush content like you've never been able to crush it before. Get good. It's Lightfall time, baby. Thanks for watching. I'll see you in Lightfall.